most innermost desires of our hearts, Lord Jesus. Whatever pain we're suffering, even when we cannot state it to somebody else, even when we cannot even just say, this is what I'm going through, your spirit knows, Lord Jesus, the pain we're going through, Lord Jesus. You're our closest friend who sits by us when we cry. In our time of need, Lord Jesus, you're there listening to our every cry, Lord, our every pain, Abba Father. And yet, Abba Father, you're up in heaven. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. The angels stand around you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Oh, let us worship this King of kings and Lord of lords. People of God, don't stand idly. We are standing in front of a King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Who deserves worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands, church, right now. Can we all just 
let's lift up our hands and say, Lord, you're worthy of it all. From you, we have received everything. We live and move because and have a being because you are allowing us to live every day of our lives. Upon this earth, you are the one who allows us to live and move. You are the one who gives us health and the power to get wealth and the ability to live each day of our life. Lord, you alone are worthy. Lift up your hands, church. Every one of you, lift up your hands and say, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to receive honor. You are worthy to receive glory, Father. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. Father, we bless your name this morning. Thank you for allowing us to come in your presence. Enjoy the worship, Father. In your presence is the fullness of joy. Lord, when we are sad and we come into the doors and we worship you, Lord, our sorrows turn into joy. Our mourning turns into laughter. When we think about what you have done for us and what you are going to be doing, Lord, you are coming back very soon to receive us in the clouds. Our hearts are filled with gratitude for all that you are going to do, Father. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, Lord, this morning. We thank you for everything that you have done. At this moment, as we come before your word, we pray that you speak to us. I pray over the tithe and the offering this morning. I pray that you bless those who they raise their hands and give to the kingdom of God. Let none of them, Lord, let none of them be in debt, go under. But Lord, you give them increase over their lives. I pray increase in blessings over them. Bless us with your word this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated in God's presence. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Tell them, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to say that it's good to be in the house and the Lord is so good. And I praise God for this morning. We are praising God for all that God is doing for us. This morning, I'm going to continue in the series that I started a few weeks ago, if you remember. The title of the series is called Live Joyfully. It's a bold commitment to a joyful life. You know, you never want to live with somebody who's always complaining and grumbling. I'm talking especially to the spouses here. Don't grumble and complain and always point out like this. That's wrong, that's wrong. We don't have that, we don't. Don't do that. Nobody wants to live with that person. I mean, I'm glad that this is not like that. That's why I'm always smiling and joyful. Whenever I feel sad, she lifts me up. Amen. That should be the testimony of every husband and wife sitting here. So we should live joyfully. It should be a bold commitment to a joyful life. In the first two sessions, if you remember, and by the way, we have been going through the epistle of Philippians. It's a treatise of joy. If you think about the unlikely person who should write this, you think that this guy is on a, is a yacht, enjoying, uh, lying down, looking at the beach. No, he is in a dungeon. He is in a Roman prison, waiting for execution. And when you read this epistle, your heart says, Lord, how can this person write like this? Joyful letter. What a joy. So we are going into the uh, aspects of joy. First two sessions, we looked into Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 11, where Apostle Paul is teaching us how to pray joyfully. Praying joyfully. Not complaining. Praying joyfully. Thanking God for what He has done. And asking God, Lord, if it is your will, I would like you to do greater things for your glory. So praying joyfully. That was the first two sessions. The second two sessions we lived about was uh, we looked into was from Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 to 21, where we looked about what is meant to share Jesus joyfully, share Christ joyfully, share the gospel joyfully. We looked into two aspects of Apostle Paul's life while in the prison, in the, in the, in the Caesar's prison and also while he was in the dungeon and how they shared the gospel joyfully. Today we are going to move forward and I'm going to speak about the topic called how we can follow 
Christ with joy. Following Christ with joy. Or uh, joyfully following Jesus. Turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. One of the most beautiful passages in the entire Bible. I, I have some personal favorites in the Bible, I, I admit to you. This is one of the passages that is my, one of my favorites in the whole Bible. Um, I'm, I'm going to read to you a few verses from verses 1 to verse number 11. Philippians uh, chapter 2 verses 1 to verse number 11. Where Apostle Paul starts about speaking about living in unity through humility. Living in unity through humility. And then he points out to the, the Lord Jesus Christ who was humble, who humbled himself to go to the cross. And we are going to look at that. I want everyone to pay attention. Close your phones and look at the Bible, look at the verse. Today I am sure the Lord is going to talk to you something about our attitude, of how we should follow Christ in humility. Philippians chapter 2 was 1 to onwards. I'm reading from the New King James Version Bible. It says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy, being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself let each of you look out not only for his own interest but also for the interest of others and then he turns into Jesus and says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, there are two therefores in this passage. One in verse number chapter 2, verse number 1, here in verse number 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those of in heaven, of those on earth, of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. In Philippians chapter 2, Jesus is presented as loving, obedient, self-sacrificing and humble. This is the mind we should be having as followers of Jesus. And Apostle Paul is here emphasizing that we should follow Jesus the way he was with joy. Now there are three ways how we can follow Christ. And I will be very brief and come to the point. Three ways how we can follow Christ. Number one, follow Christ with the right mindset. With the right mindset. You know, this is the place where everything starts in your life. Everything starts with a thought. Whatever you think, so you speak, so you do. Your decisions, your actions, your priorities, everything that happens in your life starts from here. Your mind. That is why we have been told to be transformed with the renewing of your mind. We need to be transformed to take on the mind of Christ because everything starts from here. Not a word comes out of your mouth unless you think in your mind. So this is where the origin is. This is where we have to take a grip on. And so we need to follow Christ with the right mindset. Look at verse number one. 
Apostle Paul is uh, calling upon believers for four different attitudes of Christ. What are they? Number one, he says, consolation in Christ, which means be encouraged in Christ. Number two, he says, any comfort of love, which means be consoled by the love of Christ. Third, he says, fellowship of the Spirit, which means have fellowship centered in the Holy Spirit. And number four, he says about affection and mercy, speaking about have compassion in the seat of your affections. Four different but beautiful interrelated attitudes that God wants us to develop in our life. This is all self-discipline. Every day we have to discipline ourselves not to do what God dislikes and to do what pleases God. Our life is a series of self-disciplining acts we do every day. And we have to get ourselves into shape to the shape that God wants us to be. So these four attitudes, Apostle Paul starts saying that. And when we come to verse number two, he is instructing the Philippine believers to fulfill his joy, to complete his joy because he's happy. He's joyful thinking about that. He says, well, fulfill my joy. How? How can you fulfill my joy? By preserving unity in the church. Very simple but very profound. He says, you all should preserve unity in the church. The necessity of believers to have the same mind was so important to Apostle Paul. Do you know that he mentions this in every chapter of the book of Philippians? Chapter 1 verse 27. Chapter 2 verse 5, 2 and verse number 5. Chapter 3 verse 15 and chapter 4 verse 2. He's mentioning be of the same mind or be of one mind. He is telling to the church in Philippines. So how are we going to preserve the unity? By being like-minded. In verse number 2 says, be like-minded. Be of the same mind. In verse number 2. Then in verse number 3 it says, we have to become lowly in mind. In our mind we have to think lowly, not highly. Think lowly. And in verse number 5, ultimately says, you can have all this if you have the mind of Christ. You can be of the same mind. You can think lowly if you have the mind of Christ. So, to, to fall into a standard that Apostle Paul is speaking, he says, look at Christ. Take on and have the same mind that Christ had. If you can develop in your life the same mindset of Jesus Christ, this is where you can follow him as you live your life on this earth. Now, let me also tell you that there were many issues in the Philippine church. The church was not without issues. It was not a perfect church. Because when you see here in chapter 1, verses 15 to 18, we see there was some envy and strife which means there was envy and quarrel within the church. In chapter 3, verse 18 and 19, there were some enemies of the cross of Christ outside the church. From outside, they were facing problems in the Philippine church. And when we come to chapter 4 and verse number 2, there were some disagreements between two sisters. Paul calls out two sisters by name, Yodia and Syntyche. Chapter 4, verse 2. He says they both are not of the same mind. So we see that a, a, a reality check for the Philippine church was that there was envy, there was strife, there was disagreement and even there was enemy attack of the cross of Christ. You see, unity within the church takes work. It is the role of God to unite together and it is the role of the Satan to bring disunity in the church. If there is someone who is sowing seeds or gossiping about somebody, I am telling you, it's under the instigation of Satan. Because he is the one who sows disunity within the church. So tomorrow if a sister or a brother comes to you and start telling something bad about your pastor or about a board member or your 
your your uh, other member just tell him brothers just shut i don't want to hear it anymore because you are bringing disunity in the church we don't want to have that because that is the work of satan he is trying to divide and rule where god is trying to unite and conquer the enemy and so it takes work it took requires humility there should be a willingness to admit our mistakes and it requires a sacrificial attitude so the first way we can follow christ is with a right mindset number 2 we can also follow christ with a right motive when you talk about the right motive when you come to verse number 3 apostle paul says we should keep a humble spirit keep a humble spirit verse number 3 the first part says do nothing through self ambition and conceit do nothing which means don't do anything out of self promotion or pride in your heart the bible has a great deal of things to speak about pride none of them is good when you read the different passages i don't want to go there god hates pride it was pride that brought lucifer down from the beginning and it is pride that god hates one of the things that he says god hates is people who are proud he hates pride many churches have split as a result of pride brothers and sisters let none of us be proud about anything if you think how fragile our life is there is nothing to be proud of we are living only by the grace of god amen how many of you agree with me lift up your hand and say praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah he says do nothing with selfish ambition or conceit and in verse number 3 says but do everything through lowliness of mind or humility of mind we should always remember that we are who we are it's only by the grace of god devathinte kruba kondu maatrama nammal inna whatever we are it is by the grace of god you know even apostle paul who was such a great person you don't even believe how 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 knowledgeable and how he had a he had a p degree he he was on the best university studying under the feet of gamaliel a roman citizen the jew of the jews a pharisee who knew the law but do you know what he had to say about himself turn to first corinthians chapter 15 9 and 10 apostle paul says like this i am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because i persecuted the church of god but by the grace of god i am what i am look apostle paul himself even though he's really a great person in today's standard he says i am the least of the apostles i am only here by the grace of god and so you know when you are humble it takes uh, you are it, it, it's very uh, difficult to be offended by small matters sometimes some of our uh, some of us get offended with small things you don't talk you say hello mm-hmm. like this is go don't show your face hand also like very very difficult to give hand very difficult to say praise the lord don't get offended okay it's not the end of the world we can always have a good attitude over this verse number 4 when we come very interesting listen to this everyone should listen to this we should maintain a selfless spirit the beauty of a church i believe is not on a sunday morning when you sit and hear the word of god the beauty of a church and we call our church a family we are a family of god the beauty is that we are selfless ready to help one another in the time of need so always i'm telling you don't be selfish it's not all about me my wife or my husband my children no it's about us we should be selfless because we are part of the body of christ we need other people they need us we are in a community of faith and we have to be selfless when you show consideration for other people you have less time to worry about your needs that are not being met you don't have time to think about oh i didn't have that i don't know when you are out there to help people you forget all that and god will bless you you don't have to worry so first one i said that we should follow christ with the right mindset second follow christ with the right motive now let's come to the third and the final follow christ the right model with joy we should follow christ the right model with joy 
you know jesus if there is anybody that you should look up to to follow especially young people i'm speaking to you if there is any role model that you should take to imitate don't go after the movie stars and the sports stars and any star baseball or whatever football whatever star for look at jesus he is the ultimate model for us to look to he is the ultimate model of humility and selflessness look at verse number 6 to verse number 8 jesus was at the ultimate status there is none greater because it says he was at the in the form of god he was god himself equal with god i want you to now imagine but what did jesus do and i want to bring to you a very interesting thought i don't know if you thought about it this way but jesus did not cling to his status as an equal with god but when we look at these verses 6 7 and 8 i can tell you seven steps that jesus went down in humility jesus started going down in humility just look to your bible verse number 6 Number 1 he was in the, the top step he was in the form of god number 2 it says he did not consider it equal to god the first step down jesus said i am not equal to god the father number 2 number 3 it says he made himself of no reputation the third step he did not look for his own prominence he did not make his own reputation number 4 he came to this earth in the form of a servant a born servant number 5 in the likeness of a man not as god but in the likeness of man and number 6 it says that jesus humbled and became obedient to the death god should not die right but jesus humbled himself and became obedient to his father to die and number 7 even the death of the cross the most humiliating death of all Jesus humbled seven steps he came down in humility you know it says he made a himself of no reputation he could have come to this earth as a king and that is how the wise men looked for him where is he born the king of the jews but he was did not get born as a king he took the form of a servant he made the ultimate sacrifice he made gave up his own life he died the most humiliating and the cruelest death that can ever known to the known people there is no worse death like dying on the cross hanging on three nails and bleeding yourself to death there was nothing worse than a death like that he made the ultimate sacrifice but do you know what because he did that he received the ultimate reward god gave him the ultimate reward god the father exalted his son because jesus came down the seven steps in humility his father put him to the very very top you see that i mean his attitude is humility but god lifted him and exalted jesus to the very top there was none greater god put him as the lord of everyone and the name of jesus higher than any other name no name is comparable to the name of jesus Can we give a Lord a, a shout of praise this morning? There is no name greater than the name of Jesus. His name is enough for any bondage to be lifted, because that's the name that God gave him. When we focus on Christ, let me tell you that everything else will take care of itself. No matter whatever sacrifices you make for others, Jesus has made a greater sacrifice for you. When your main aim is to glorify Christ. you don't worry after getting your own way let me give you the application now i gave you the the doctrine behind the humility of christ and now i'm going to give you the application i want you to think this very carefully if each of you can follow this in your life i am telling you it will be a heaven on earth in your home in your workplace in the church wherever you go you will spread joy to other people if you can follow this to the core i'm speaking to everyone this is the application in john chapter 10 verse 27 our lord jesus said my sheep will 
hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. My sheep, listen to that. My sheep will hear my voice. I know them and they will follow me. And what was the thing, how can we follow Jesus? What was the attitude of Christ? The thing that comes about me from the total thing is that he became a servant. It says he became a bond servant. He literally displayed that when he started washing the feet of his disciples. Some of us, when we think about having a feet washing uh, ceremony, we say, Ech, I don't want to wash somebody's feet. as the dirtiest part of somebody's body. I don't want to go down, swoop down, take water and wash. How can I do that? But Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. And he showed that if I, your Lord and Master, did this, you also do, need to do for one another. Why did Jesus do that? He was teaching us that we need to be humble. We need to be humble, brothers and sisters. There is nothing to be proud about. Our riches can vanish one day. Now you just wait. All the stock is maybe going to go up or go down. I don't know. I'm not predicting. Don't take me as a prophecy. I don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen in 2020. You know? We don't know what's going to happen in our life, our body. We are so, I mean, beautiful or handsome. One split, one accident, something and take it away. Don't be proud of anything that we have achieved. Because our life is in the hand of God. And we need to have an attitude like a servant. Why do I say that attitude of a servant? In Luke 19, 10, Jesus said, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost and it is uh, he wants to be a servant to all he came to serve not to be served i want to tell you five things what it means to be a servant very quickly this is the practical part of what we need to do we need to become a servant before the lord and before others becoming a servant means giving up our rights for other people if you are going to have the same attitude of christ we are going to have to give up our rights give up our privileges in deference to other people. This is what Jesus did and if we are going to follow after him, this is what we must do. Number two, being a servant means becoming less so that others can become more. This was the attitude of John the Baptist. He said, I must decrease so he must increase. So Jesus became a servant as he was willing to leave the splendor of heaven to a stable. He left the company of angels to be in the company of men, many of them who didn't like him. He, who was the omnipresent, took himself the limitations of a mortal man. He did it to be obedient, but also he did it because he loved you and me. And that is the heart, what it means to follow Christ. It means to lose our life to save it, it means to empty ourselves, to be able to be filled by him and his passions for other people. Number three, being a servant means being obedient, whatever the cost. Jesus was obedient even to the death on the cross. Genuine discipleship is being obedient to Christ, whatever the cost, whatever the call, whatever and however we are obedient to the word of God. There is no part-time or partial disciples. With Jesus, it is either all or nothing. We are either in or we are out. There is no on the fence with Jesus. And so, servanthood means being obedient whatever the cost. And finally, servanthood will be rewarded one day. This is the beautiful thing I see. Servanthood will be rewarded one day. You know, because Jesus was obedient, he humbled himself. He was willing to pay the price. He, God, exalted him. God gave him a name that every tongue, every tongue, even the atheists, people who deny him, they are one day going to say, Jesus Christ is Lord. One day every tongue will confess. You know, the principle is, is this. If you are humble, God will reward you. If you become a servant, God is going to lift you up. Proverbs 22, 4 says, The result of humility is the fear of the Lord along with wealth, honor and life. Matthew 23, verse 11 says, the greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. 
James 4 10 says, Humble yourself before the Lord, He will exalt you in due time. Remember, not all the rewards from God will you will receive in this life. Some are for the life to come. But we have to be a servant to all. And being a servant, number five is, being a servant is more than, uh, more about being than doing. You have to be one. Not just do a few things to show. Be one. If the, this is a, 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 you have to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. And that is what God expects from me. So as I'm going to close, I'm going to ask you, would you, are you ready to serve than to be served? Is your attitude like that of a worldly person or is it like that of Christ? Are you going through the motions of service or are you truly becoming a servant? The example has been set for you, Jesus Christ. The call is clear. All that remains today is your response. It's your decision, your commitment. Can you just stand up on your feet right now? As we come to the Lord and we stand before Him and we say, Lord, am I ready to obey your call? Am I ready to give control of my life? And am I ready to give the control of my life to you? You are a good shepherd. Am I ready to follow after you? Because we need to follow Christ with joy. We need to be like Jesus each and every day of our lives. Everyone close your eyes for a moment and uh, let's, uh, let's just uh, bow our heads for a moment. I want you to think about it. Who holds the, who holds the, 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 the wheel of your life? Are you still directing your own life or have you given the control of your life to Jesus? Have you allowed him to take over your life and lead you the way that uh, he wants you to go? Close your eyes for a moment. Every one of you, I want you to think in your heart. Have I given control over my future to my God? Hallelujah. If not, today I want you to give control over your life to the Lord. He is a good shepherd. He is a shepherd who died for you. Today he is a shepherd who wants to lead you. We need to say, Lord, you are the shepherd. You are the shepherd of my soul. I want to follow you. I want to give control of my life to you. I want to do what is willing for you. Can you sing the song as we are going to sing the song of a dedication? Let's all sing together and worship the Lord. Amen. Shepherd of my soul, I give you all control.
And today as we stand before you, I pray that help us to follow you. Follow your life of humility. Follow your life of obedience. That we will do what pleases you, Father. That we will be in unity. And we will be one in Christ. Father, this morning I, I bless your people. I pray and I bless every brother, every sister standing here. Every child, Lord. I pray your divine blessings to flow into their life. That you be a good shepherd. That you lead them in green pastures. You lead them beside the still waters. You restore their souls, Lord. Lead them in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. I pray your divine blessings as they go from here to wherever you are leading them, Father. Let them always follow after you. Listen to the voice of the shepherd and do your will, Father. I pray your divine blessings, Lord, to accompany them and lead them and guide them and use them as a blessing for many people. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. We give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.